Hi there grade nines and welcome to Worksheet Cloud Maths. I hope you're all well today and you're all keeping warm. If this, if this is the first time that you have joined our lessons, I hope you enjoy, enjoy today's lessons so much that you will come back and watch some more. Right, let's get going with today's lesson. We are going to be looking at organizing and representing data. And in particular today, we are going to look at measures of dispersion. Now let's see what that means, okay? These tell us how the data is spread out around the mean. So in other words, whether it's close to the mean or whether it's far away from the mean. Okay. So it is best to rank the data from lowest to highest, as this will help to determine the quartiles. And we'll look at what the quartiles are, but I think that word sort of gives it away. Um, but if you don't rank the data from lowest to highest, then it is very difficult to work out these quartiles. So quartiles are associated with the mean, uh, with the median, sorry. And the first quartile is one quarter of the way through the ordered data, and we work it out with n plus 1 all over 4. Now remember to work out the median, it's n plus 1 all over 2. So now we're working out the first quarter of the data, the value that fits into the first quarter of the data, or that measures the first quarter of the data, so we divide it by 4. Okay, the second quartile is quartile 2, and as I said, that is the same as the median. And as you can see there, um, the formula is n plus 1 divided by 2 because that value comes halfway through the data. Then the other one that we need to be um, interested in is quartile 3. And this is 3 quarters of the way through the data. So you'll go 3 n plus 1 divided by 4. In other words, it's the first quartile times by 3 to get to the third quartile, which is now 3 quarters of the way. We don't work with quartile 4 because that would be the last um, value in the set of values, okay, in the data. Right, the interquartile range is then your Q3, your third quartile, minus your first one. So it's taking the three quarters minus the value at the three quarters mark, minus the value at the one quarter mark, and that is close, quite close to the mean. So we're keeping it around the mean to see um, what that range is. Okay, right, and then the range gives us an idea of how the data is bunched or dispersed around the median. So remember, the median is the middle value, um, and we need to see, is the, is the data all bunched together, or is it dispersed, is it spread out? Because there are different things that you can take um, from that if the, if the data is dispersed, and generally, when we have one dispersed value, we actually call it an outlier, and it will generally be either your first value, or your first couple of values, or your last couple of values. All right, but let's put this into practice. Okay, so here's a set of data. Um, as you can see, it is not ordered. So our first thing would be um, to find the median, we have to order the data. So what we're going to do is, first of all, using prior knowledge, find the median then find the first quartile and the third quartile, and then the interquartile range. Um, but in order to do that, like I said just now, let's order the data first. So obviously, one is going to go first, and then two, three, four, four, five, seven, seven, eight, nine, ten. So it should look like that. A good thing to do is if you are reordering data so that it is actually in the right order from lowest to highest value is cross off the, the set that you or the value rather that you have um, put into the right order so that you don't repeat and you don't get you don't leave anything out so we have ordered our data there and now we need to look at the mean so the formula for finding the mean remember is n plus 1 divided by 2 so we have got 11 values in the set of data so 11 plus 1 will give me 12 12 divided by 2 gives me 6. So therefore, the value um, that is the sixth value in the set of data is number 5. So we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That is the sixth value, which means that that is our median. Okay, so quartile 1 then is we're going to take n plus 1 divided by 4. So we know that we've got 11 values. 11 plus 1 divided by 4 we are going to end up with um, 12 divided by 4, which is the third value. And which is the third value? Um, if we look here, 1, sorry, 1, 2, 3. The third value is 3. Okay? And then we're going to look for our quartile 3, 
which is going to be 3 times n plus 1 divided by 4. So it will be 36 divided by 4, which is our ninth value. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So our third quartile value is 8. So how do we work out the interquartile range? Well, all we do is we're going to take our third value and minus our first value, or um, yeah, the third quartile minus the first quartile, and it's going to be 8 minus 3. So our interquartile range is 5. All right, so what does this mean? So if here's the ordered data that we worked with, we know that the interquartile range is 5. To find out the spread of the data around the median, okay, remember the median was the middle number, which is 5, um, and the interquartile range is 5, we are going to go quartile 1 minus 1, 5 times our interquartile range. Now, quartile 1, remember, is 3. So what we're trying to do is see with this 1, 5 times our interquartile range how far it is from the 3, okay, going towards the left. And then with the quartile 3, we're going to see how far it is going towards the right um, from our quartile 3. Um, because if it was if it's out like that, it means that these values are um, are bunched. Okay. In other words, if if this value quartile one minus one comma five times the interquartile range, if it is less than one, then we safely say that these numbers, these values, are close to the median. If this one, if Q three plus one comma five times our interquartile range is actually outside of the 10, we also can say that these values are close to the median, which means that they are bunched. But let's fig figure it out first. So let's take our Q1. Okay, as it says there, if there are values above and below these values, they would be considered outliers, which means that they don't represent the data. They stand outside um, the range of the data. Okay, so we've got our intercortal range as 5. To find out the spread, like I said, it's Q1 minus, first of all, 1, 5 times the interquartile range, and then it's Q3 plus that same value. Okay, so here we go. We've got our quartile 1 is 3, so we're going to go 1, 5 times 5, because 5, remember, represents our interquartile range, which we've worked out there. It's the 8 minus the 3. That's we get, where we get that value. So 1, 5 times 5 is going to give me 7 comma 5. 3 minus 7 comma 5 is going to give me minus 4 comma 5. Well nothing here goes below 1. So actually the, the data on that side of the median is bunched. It's closer to the median. Let's look at the quartile 3. So we've got 8 because remember that is our quartile 3 um, num value. And 1 comma 5 times 5 which is the interquartile range which we already worked out. And we know that that is going to be 8 plus 7 comma 5 this time because we want to see how much it goes out this way. And that is going to give us 15 comma 5. Okay, now again, 10 is less than 15 comma 5, so it fits within that boundary, which means that we can say that there are no outliers in this set of data. We can say that this set of data is bunched around the median. Okay, so let's look at another set of data just, just to go over everything again. And then you can try one on your own. Right, so here we have a set of data. We can see that it is not ordered. So we need to first order the data. Now, like I said to you, what I think you should do is um, basically um, mark off as you've written them down. So like that, the 7 goes first, then the 8, then the 9, 10, 11, 13, 14, 15, 16 and another 16, 18 and 20. Okay, now very often if you don't mark it off like that, what ends up happening is that you get disturbed and then you only write down one 16, for example, or you leave out a number. If you haven't marked it off, then you don't know which numbers you may have left out. So it's a double check also to count how many values you've got and check that when you've ordered them, you've got the same number of values. Okay. Now find the median. We know that it's n plus 1 divided by 2. There are 12 um, values in the set of data. So it's 12 plus 1 divided by 2. It's going to give me 13 divided by 2. So it's 6 comma 5. That means that it is between the value that is number 6 and number 7. Okay. 
So that will be between 13 and 14. So how do we work it out? We go 13 plus 2 um, divided, uh, sorry, 13 plus 14, because it's got to be between the two, divided by 2. It's 27 divided by 2, and that's going to give me 13,5. Okay? We now, so we know what the median is. Sorry, let me just correct that for us. There we go, I corrected it for us, because our median is 13,5 and not 14,5. Right, so now we have to find our quartile 1 value and our quartile 3 value. Okay, so how are we going to do this? Quartile 1 is n plus 1 divided by 4. So that will be 12 plus 1 divided by 4. It gives us 13 divided by 4, which is 3,25. That means that um, it would be a quarter of the way between the value three, the, the third value and the fourth value. Okay, so that would be between the 9 and the 10. So we're going to say it's going to be 9,25 because it is a quarter of the way between those two values. Okay, now let's work out quartile 3. Remember, it's basically 3 times that value, but let's work it out. 12 plus 4 um, times 3, 12 plus 1, sorry, times 3 divided by 4, 39 divided by 4, it's going to give me 9,75. Now that means it is between the 9th and the 10th. Um, value and it should be about three quarters of the way but have a look here they are both 16 on either side so actually our value will be 16 okay because three quarters of the way between 16 and 16 is still 16 all right so let's go on so we've got our quartile one value and our quartile three value we've got our median okay what is the interquartile range we're going to say take quartile three minus quartile one and we are going to get 6,75. Okay, so that's the interquartile range. Now let's find out the spread, what the spread around the median is like. Okay, remember it's 1,5 times our interquartile range, and then it's Q1 minus that to go to the left of the data, and then add that to Q3 to go to the right of the data. Okay, so it's 9,25 minus 1,5 times 6,75. If you can't remember where we got all that from, that's our quartile 1 value, and that is our interquartile range. Okay, so let's do that. 9,25 minus 10,125, um, and that will give us naught, minus 0.875. 10,125 we've got from saying 1,5 times 6,75. Okay, so that means we need to look and see if values are less than or equal to minus 0, 0.875, and we can see that there aren't any values that low. Right, let's look at the next one, the Q3 um, side. We're going to go 16 plus, because we want to go to the right of the data, and it's going to be 16 plus 10,125. That's going to give us 26,125, and our last value is actually 20. Okay, so we can say that there are no outliers in the set of data, and we can say that the data is bunched around the median. Right, so now here's a case for you to try. I'm going to give you the data. Um, there we go. It has already been ordered for you, so I've already done that part for you. And now what I want you to do is find the median first, then find Q1, then find Q3, find the interquartile range, and then say whether the data is bunched or dispersed around the median, and give a reason for your answer. Okay, so pause the video. There's the data. That's what you have to do. Go off and do it, and when you come back, we'll go over it together. Right, how did you do? Okay, there the data has been ordered for you. Find the median. Well, we know that it's n plus 1 divided by 2. Um, we've got 11 values in the set of data. So it's 11 plus 1 divided by 2, which is 22, uh, sorry, 12 divided by 2, sorry. So it will be the sixth value in the data. Um, and that is 48. So if we just count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, that is the sixth value. And there happens to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 on that side too. So that was nice and easy to work out. Um, it's always a bit of a juggle. Well, not a bit of a juggle, but I'm sure, and I'm sure you can manage it. But when it is an even set of data, um, and then you have to find the average of the two on either side. Okay, so now we know that the median is 48. The next thing you had to do was find Q1, and remember the formula for that is n plus 1 divided by 4. So now we've got 11 plus 1, because there's 11 values in the set of data, plus 1 is 12 divided by 4 will give you 3. So that will be Q1. 
Okay, so it's the third value, and the third value in the set of data, as we can see here, 1, 2, 3, is 36. All right, so now let's find Q3. So that will be 3 times n plus 1. That gives me 3 times 11 plus 1. 3 times 12 is 36. Divided by 4 will give me 9. That is the ninth value in this um, set of data. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And as you can see, it's 67. All right, so now we've got our quartile 3 value. We've got our quartile 1 value. Remember, to find the interquartile range, you subtract the one from the other. So we're going to go Q3 minus Q1. And that is going to say, give me 67 minus 36. And my answer is 31. All right, everybody happy so far? Remember, if you have made a mistake, maybe it's just a calculation error that happens so easily, guys. Or otherwise, go back to the beginning and start watching the video again and go slowly and make your own notes. Or otherwise, you can send an email to grade9 at worksheetcloud.com with your query or your question and somebody can get back to you with an answer. Okay, so now we found our interquartal range as being 31. And now we've got to say whether the data is bunched or dispersed around the median. So we've got to work that out, remember? And remember we work it out for the Q1, it's minus the 1,5 times your interquartile range. And for Q3, it's plus 1,5 times your interquartile range. So let's do Q1 first. It will be 36 because we're given that Q1 is 36. Minus 1,5 times 31 because our interquartile range was 31. Remember we subtracted those two. Okay, so 1,5 times 31 gives me 46,5. Um, and then we go 9,25 minus 46,5, and it's going to give me minus 37,25. There's no value that's that low. So actually, the value to the left of the, of the median is actually bunched. Right, now let's look at the other side. We've got 67. Remember, that's our Q3 value, our third quartile value. And we're going to take 1,5 times 31, which has our interquartile range. And then we're going to add it onto the 67 because we want to see how far we can go to the right of the median. So 67 plus 46,5 is going to give me 83,5. Okay, now we can see that there is a value bigger than 83,5. Can you see here? What is this going to tell us? Well, it's going to tell us that the data is bunched around the median in the lower range. So remember our median. Um, is 48 so this side of the median the data is fairly bunched okay but this side of the median the data is not bunched all right um, and that means that there is an outlier and 88 appears to be the outlier because it's higher than 83,5 which is our um, quartile 3 plus the in interquartile range times 1,5 so that 1,5 allows for a little a little bit of distance um, and the interquartile range remember is your quartile 3 minus your quartile 1 which creates the middle part of the data so if it is too far out it becomes an outlier like 88 and remember 88 means that it's not actually following the rest of the um, format of the data it, it actually dispels any kind of um, rule if you can put it like that of the data it's outlying it it doesn't fall into the main part of the data so the data is bunched around the median in the lower value range but it is dispersed in the higher value range and 88 appears to be an outlier did you all get that guys i'm sure you did if you didn't it might have just been a calculation error as i said just now otherwise go back and just go through it step by step to see where you went wrong okay um, right, guys, thank you for listening. I actually think there's a mistake here. Let me just go back and check because it might change some things. Sorry about that, guys. No, there wasn't a mistake. I was just looking at the 48 and thinking maybe it's not in the right place. But it is exactly in the right place. It's absolutely fine. Right, guys, thank you so much for joining us for this lesson. And thank you um, for being part of Worksheet Cloud. I hope you keep well. Until next time. Bye-bye for now.